Our Father, we honor and exhort you for this morning. Thank you for this assembly of your people. Thank you for the yearnings of our heart. Thank you for the Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. And so, Lord, this morning as we continue to look at our call to be holy, we ask, Lord Jesus, that every provision you've made for us to walk with you, for us to have an unbroken communion with you, please open our eyes to see it. Holy Spirit, we ask that you walk in our midst and breathe upon your word among us. Let it mix with faith in our hearts. Thank you. We honor your God for what? And all the various works you've been doing through your servants. We want to ask this morning that you will again use this conference to add value to what you have been doing in our midst. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to appreciate Dr. Gary Magzi. He said I should call him brother now, so I will call him brother Magzi for the privilege of our relationship for some years now. We have been interacting for so much, and I want to thank God for the work here. And for all of us that are gathered, may the Lord bless you. And all the members of faculty and all our visiting uh, lecturers and friends, my prayer is that God will use this moment to bless all of us together. Our theme is called to be holy. And whenever you look at such a theme, it raises different questions in different minds. Several people thought or think or consider the holiness of life has to do with legalism, has to do with rules and regulations. So they almost always think that anybody who preaches holiness is about to dish out rules and regulations. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. You have to follow these strict rules. You have to go that way. You must not sit here. You must not sit there. So that's the first blackmail. I call it blackmail of holiness of life. Either because those who desire to live in holiness did not touch the provision that God has made for such a life. So they thought that what it has to do is to depend on the energy of the flesh to be able to achieve it. So it becomes a rigorous exercise that is usually very futile because it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So from that perspective, a lot of people just turn their heart and turn their back on an important lifestyle that God calls all of us into. And I'd like to tell you that a life of holiness is a great life. It's a glorious life. It's a life of the greatest liberty that you could ever have. Liberty of the spirit. And so as I approach this uh, theme this morning, I will not be impressing on you too much on the need to be holy. I will not, I will spend a bit of time on that. But I would like to say to you that I prefer, as I sense the Lord will be leading, to look at what God has provided to make you to walk with God, to carry a life that is victorious, a life that is holy. Such that holiness of life 
will not be an activity. It will be a life. It will not be something you are struggling to do. But it will be a life that you just live as a normal life. It will be like the normal life that a child of God should live. So my prayer is that within this slot that we have, we'll be able to lay uh, some foundation again. And I thank you for bringing the recap of what was, uh, what was taught yesterday. Because we are drinking from the same pot. So you might see me saying the same thing that our brother may have said, but in my own language or in the way the Holy Spirit may guide but just know that we are, we are pressing on the same, the same issue. May the Lord grant you understanding as we go ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. I would like you to read some general passages together with me before we get into the issues. Just to remind you that such passages have been there in Scripture which you have known generally, but it's good to repeat it again. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. You will notice from verse thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. I better read. Wherefore, guard up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner or conversation. The word conversation in the Old King James is uh, interpreted as in all manner of life. So when you talk of conversation in the Old King James, we are not talking about talking. We are talking about the entire lifestyle. So when they say your conversation, they are talking about your general lifestyle your manner of life, your outlook to life in everything. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know, that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Thank you. Now, that is a general passage you know, isn't it? And I will not spend any much time on it just to inform you that he who has called us is holy. Eh? He who begat us again in Christ Jesus is holy. Now, if, if an evil man delivers a child, what would that child be? Eh? He's an evil man. Even if that child were to be born in the village of Ijebuland. What will it still be? Why? Because he who born him is an Igbo man. Is that okay? Does that make a little sense? That he who has called you, he who gave back to you, he to whom you emanate from, is holy. So, what does that mean? That the life that we have inherited in Christ Jesus is not a different life. 
is holy. So you see, that's the first issue that I don't want you to forget that. I don't want you to forget that the scripture that we are reading noted, it said, as obedient children. As obedient children. And when you see verse um, 18, he said, for as much as you know, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, and as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, as if to say, the basis, the, the, the grant for living a life of holiness is purely because we were born again by him who is holy. Is that making any little sense to you? So I want to first begin by saying that holiness is not first an activity. It's a life. And it's not first something to learn. We're going to talk about what that means. It is a life to be born into. I didn't learn to be Yoruba man. Did I learn to be so? Eh? No. What makes me Yoruba man now? It's because I was born. The life I carry. That's what it is. That's why I am. So, once we begin to first note that he who calls you, he who brought you to himself, he who extended his life into you is holy. So because of that, a normal child of God, please take note now, a normal child of God shares a life that is holy by virtue of his new birth. By virtue of the life that he has, he has inherited and that he has collected from him. That life is holy. That's why you are going to be holy. You will see as I read, he said, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy. Because it is written, Be holy because. Did you see the word for? Eh? He said, because I am holy. Praise the Lord. Did I confuse you a bit? Eh? Alright. Let me read one more passage. Still in this line. Very simple passages that I know you should, you have read over and over again. Before I begin now to lay what is the foundation what is the provision that God has made when he called us into this life? Look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 is another passage that you are very familiar with. But as simple as it is, they lay foundation for the kind of life that God is calling me and you into. I read First John chapter 3. Are you there? Alright. Let's read from verse 5. From verse 5. I read up to verse 10. Very quickly there. And you know. That he. Jesus. Was manifested. To do what? To take away our sins. And in him. Is no sin. Are you following that scripture? All right. Whosoever abides in him, sinneth not. 
Whosoever has not seen him, I mean, whosoever has seen it, has not seen him, neither has known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is what? Is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. And you will see the reason. You do see the reason. It said, because the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was what? Was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. And then you will see that the Bible did not say because he's praying very hard, because he's following some rules and regulations, you will see the Bible giving the reason. What is the reason? He said, for his seed, his nature remains in him. And he cannot sin because he's active. Eh? Talk to me. Because he is struggling. Because he is making strong effort. What did I say? Because he is born of God. Very, very important foundation that we need to catch. Now, see the logic. You know, sometimes the Bible is very logical if you want to follow it. He said, you know that Jesus was manifested to take away our sins and in him, inside him, there is no sin to sin. Are we together? If I'm sitting in this room now, since there is no bear in this room, can I possibly get drunk sitting inside this room? Why not? There's no beer here. If I want to drink beer and get drunk, what will I do? I have to say, excuse me. Gary, excuse me. There's something I need to do and it's not here. Please give me a chance to go out. Are you understanding that now? So whenever you see a man who is living in sin. Do you know the truth of the matter is that he has taken excuse to do what? To go out. Because in Christ Jesus, there is no sin to sin. Did you understand that now? There is no sin in Jesus Christ to sin. So if a man is in Christ Jesus and is abiding in Christ Jesus and is living in Christ Jesus, even by doing nothing else, he will not sin. He will just live in holiness. Because the life that we have come to take in Christ Jesus by itself is what? It's just holy. In him, there is no sin to sin. So if a man abides in Christ Jesus and he lives the life that Christ chooses to live with him and in him, what will be the natural result of that man's life? It's holiness. It will just be holiness. So he now says, Whosoever abides in him. That is, whosoever sits inside this hall like this and continues to sit here without doing anything else, he will not do what? Why not? Because there is no sin to sin. So you see, for Jesus, 
you will notice that if you look at the Bible, the teachings of Christ, he only gave us simple things to do and our lives will be right. They abide in me and I in you. Is that not what he said? Say, whosoever abides in me and I in him, the same will bring forth much fruit. Is that what he said? Simple. If Christ simply said, just stay in me. And men of old that have understood this life, they say in Christ, we have our being. We have our lives. We walk in, we walk out, but in him. So you see, they achieved holiness of life, not because they struggled. They achieved holiness of life, not because they were trying to do anything. They achieved holiness of life because they simply were abiding in him. They were simply abiding in him. And I want to tell you that Christ is not so narrow. As if to say, ah, if I were to abide in Christ Jesus, my life would be so narrow, so relegated, I would become nothing. Honestly speaking, I want to tell you, the Bible says, it pleased the Father that in Christ Jesus shall all fullness dwell. So, permit me to first establish before I go ahead. Because that's the first thing I pray that I can lay in your mind. That our call to holiness is our call to life. Anything outside that, honestly speaking, it's not a life to live. It's not a life to live. But I want to now say to you that in Christ Jesus, all the fullness dwells. So never you think that, oh, if I choose to live in Christ and abide in Christ, there will be something that I will be missing. Which is the temptation for those who thought this only way of life? Mm -mm. Let's do something else about it. Because they, they have an impression that somebody who is living in holiness is a person who is not happy. Is a person who is not making progress. Is a person who cannot excel. Is a person who cannot do well. He cannot do well in business. He cannot do well in academics. He cannot do well. He cannot, oh, you see, this only thing. You just, it's just about dressing. It's just about walking like this and uh, squeezing your face and not being happy. No. It pleased the Father that in Christ Jesus, all fullness should dwell. Are we together? And for you to know, the Bible said, for in him is hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Maybe when you are reading your Bible, in your mind, because we have learned to dichotomize I know that when you are reading Colossians chapter 2 verse 3, when it says, for in him is hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge, your mind quickly add a prefix which is not in the Bible. What is that prefix? Spiritual. That's how many of you read it. In him is hidden. Let's read it. Please read Colossians. Just to, just to carry you a bit further. I hope you are not losing trend of what we are talking about. The Lord helps us now. Now, Colossians chapter 2. Verse 
earlier in Colossians 1 verse 19, the Bible had said, It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. You have seen that in chapter 1 verse 19, isn't it? Now, but when you come to chapter 2, verse 3 now says, I better read from verse 1, that your, their heart might be comforted, verse 2, being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are what? Are hid all the treasures of what? Of wisdom and knowledge. Well, you see, because of the misunderstanding as if Jesus Christ is only relevant when it comes to religion, when it comes to spiritual things. Are you hearing me? Many people imagine that you cannot abide in Christ. You cannot stay in Christ. You cannot follow the principles of Christ and be the best you can be in the world. Are you getting me? So they imagine that Christ is averse unto competence, unto professionalism, unto excellence. So quietly, many, many people imagine that if you want to talk to them about living Christ's life, which is holy life, you are actually calling them unto mediocrity. You are calling them unto backwardness. You are calling them unto empty religion. You are calling them into dryness. You are calling them into draftness. And you are calling them unto empty, abstract life. I don't know whether I'm, you are getting me at all. Because having followed God for many years now, and having searched to live the Christ life, I keep wondering, why will anybody not be excited about this life? Why will anybody imagine there's a better way to live? And I am not being religious. I'm just telling you the truth. That in Christ Jesus are hid how many things? All the treasures of wisdom. Not just spiritual wisdom. Not spiritual knowledge. All treasures of wisdom and knowledge. There is no wisdom about anything that you need to do on earth and in heaven that you will not sufficiently I did not say sparingly I did not say barely sufficiently find in Christ Jesus there is no scientific knowledge there is no economic knowledge there is no leadership wisdom that you want to look for that you not find much 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 more of it in Christ Jesus so I want to now tell you if only life is living and abiding in the life that Christ makes available to you, then let me say, holiness is not averse unto progress. It's not averse. It's not contrary. It's not incompatible with the highest attainment that anybody will attain in life. So you will see that who could bypass Joseph 
in the whole of Egypt. Talk to me. Did you remember that Pharaoh said, where can we find any man who is as discreet, that is, who is as wise, who is as calculative, who is as scientific oriented, like you, in all my kingdom. Where can we find anybody like you? A man in whom the excellent spirit of God dwells. And yet, you will see that that Joseph, women were looking at him because he was handsome. Holiness is not averse unto the beauty of your face. Oh my God, am I confusing you now? Holiness of life is not incompatible with a life that is attractive. What is it that Joseph was? A slave in the house. Why should the August wife be fully for him? You didn't hear me at all. He wasn't running after that woman. The madame was falling in love for him. Why? Because Joseph he was not only intelligent, he was highly intelligent. He never had slave mentality. And that has nothing to do with holiness. Some people think that when we are talking of holiness, holiness of life, we are just talking about people who are dropped out, people who are not intelligent enough and who are afraid. And they say, I, don't, I want to be holy. I want to be holy, Lord. So it now looks as if our message is only for the downtrodden, it's only for the fearful. So you now see those who think they want to make the most of their life in the world. Immediately, they think that holiness of life is going to hinder them. And unfortunately, many pastors, they also, because they have not experienced the holiness we are talking about, they themselves, they have been defeated inside. So they feel that if I keep preaching this holiness, nobody will come to my church. Important people will not come. Educated people will not sit down. Businessmen will not come here. No. No, sir. The life of holiness is the highest possible life. That anybody who wants to be the best in life must embrace. So when Joseph in that condition could look at the woman in the face, nobody is there. So the holiness of life I'm talking about is, is first a life. It's not environmental. Oh my brother, are you hearing me? You are holy, not because you are in a holy environment. You are not with me again. The holiness of life is the life that is intrinsic. First, in the heart of a man. It is not first an environment. If it is an environment, it means when you walk out of holy environments, you lose it. So everybody, because you say, hey, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. So when they move out of our holy environment, 
they looked left and right. They said, thank God. I am free from the cage. They are holy because they are in a cage. They are the rat. I mean the cat. That appears to overcome the desire to eat rat. Because you kept him. Where? In a cage. If you keep a cat in a cage for one year. And rats are freely moving everywhere in the compound. What do you think the cat is doing inside the cage? Ah. Ah. Anyway, 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 we have to be holy here. We have to be holy here, you know. Hi, we have to be holy here. <laughs> so to him, Holiness is a punishment. Holiness is a restriction. And is looking for the slightest opportunity to break out. So you see some people who appear to have been holy in our midst for five years. And then you post him out. Just for two months. To go and be somewhere. And everything has changed. He said, brother, what happened? If he wanted to tell you the truth, which many times they are not able to tell, is to say, no. You say, I'm only doing what I've always wanted to do, which opportunity did not allow me while I was in the environment. Genuine holiness. Is not environmental. It's a life inside. And it's a life that can be expressed anywhere. Honestly, it's a life that overcomes. It's a life that wherever it is, it will overcome. For whatsoever is born of God, Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Now I was saying Joseph. Alone. Nobody was there. The woman had made everything possible. Sent everybody out. And had been constantly. Honey her eyes. Until one day, she couldn't, all the eye contact failed, all the body language did not work. She said, ah, JJ, that's what you used to call yourself. <laughs> the JJ. And if she wants to be more polite, say, Joe Jack. Because it's Joseph Jacob, isn't it? Joe Jack. Ah, JJ. Come now. And when the brother said, Ma'am, say no. You are making me feel old. I'm not as old. I'm not like that. But you see, no environment. Nobody else. But he has a life. If you read your Bible constantly, say, and the Lord was with Joseph. That is the secret of a holy life. I'm just trying to first define what is our call to holiness. I want to tell you that it's the call to the simple life that God offers us. is a life. And you see because. He was living a holy life. Because the Lord was with him. It's a life. Honestly speaking. I don't want you not to understand me. I want you to go to fellowship all the time. 
I want you to be in the good atmosphere of believers. Is that okay? Never you forsake the fellowship of one another so that we can provoke one another to love. Eh? But fellowship is not the cause of a holy life. Eh? Confusing you? Fellowship is only a fertilizer. But a fertilizer is not the crop. If there is no crop that you have planted and you begin to fill the place with fertilizer, will anything grow for you? Yeah. It's only wheat that will grow. So, brothers... It is the life. He said, and he cannot see. Because the seed of God abides in him. It's in him. It's first a life inside, not outside. The outside environment might be useful. But if not, it's not the issue. I don't know whether there was a fellowship that Brother Joseph attended. Can you ever think whether there's one fellowship in Potiphar's house that Brother Joseph went regularly? Eh? No. No, sir. He created his own fellowship with God. He communed with God because he has the life. And you know what he said? He said, look, there is nothing in this house that your husband has not released to me. There's nothing except you. And that's because you are his wife. How can I? Did you see the word? How can I? Then I would like you to take note because I will come back to it when I get to the New Testament. How can I? Do this great wickedness and sin against who? Against the Lord. <laughs> Holiness. Because of the presence of God in a man's life. How can I do that? How can I sin against the Lord? Nobody is here, but he is here. How can I violate my life? That's what the young man is saying. How can I violate the essence of my life? If there's anything you call Joseph, that is the life. How can I? On what? What's the reason? What, 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 what am I going to get? Madam, no! And the woman was not going to accept a no for an answer. And I hear Brother Joseph say, well, I have a dream for my life. I have a dream for my life. My life we never waste. I have a dream for my life. I have a dream for my life. And I have a dream for my life. My life we never waste. I have a dream for my life. And she said, Madam, you could tear my clothes. You would not tear my destiny. And off. She let loose. The button. And the woman grabbed the cloth. And the brother left. Escaped. With life. Naked. But clothed with life. You see. Let me tell you. Holiness of life. Is a clothing. Holiness of life. Is a clothing. Not of this. That's why. When the children of Israel sinned. God did not just say they sinned. He said the people of Israel. 
have made themselves naked. Oh my God. Do you think they were not wearing clothes? They were wearing clothes, but with God. When the life that he has imparted, the life of holiness, when it is torn, even if you are well suited, heaven sees you naked. That was why when Adam and Eve lost that life, the Bible said, what did they say? And their eyes were open and they saw that they were world naked. When a man understands that living, being called to the life of holiness is a call to life. It's not an activity. It's not a special rules, regulations, stand this, do this, go here, go here, come there, sit down, stand up, knee down here. No. It's a life. And that life, I said, is a clothing. You'll be, you see, I'm depending a bit on your Bible knowledge. <laughs> so put on the flesh. Put off your flesh. And put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You read such a thing before. Eh? That's it. It's a clothing. It's a life we, we carry. They sent him to prison. They didn't matter to him. Right in prison. The same life. The same life. The prison water. As soon as he saw it. He said. This man's life is superior to all that I have myself. I cannot even withstand the wisdom of his administration. So I want you to know that holiness is not, is not averse unto managerial skill. So let nobody blackmail holiness of life as if if you try to follow this Jesus so much, you will not make it in life. You will not get anywhere. You will not go far. You will not be this. What do you mean by that? The only life that can excel everywhere is this life. I want, you know, I'm presenting this to you this morning. Because maybe the first thing you needed to catch is to have a correct perspective of the life we are talking about, the life of holiness. So that when you become a pastor and you are preaching, you don't go preaching this life as a defeated fellow. What bothers me is that those of us that have the life and we have the message, you are so timid. The young man that is talking nonsense, that is speaking motivational psychology, he's bold. He's telling people, yeah, if you come this way, you will make it. But when they come to you, you say, well, you know, you say, we are just trying to be holy and you have to be very careful. There are places you must know. If you go there, you'll just finish. <laughs> if you laugh too much, your holiness will evaporate now. <laughs> so, you know, we have, to, we have to do measured laughter in those days. Mm. Because we are very, we, we don't want to lose it. It's like something you are just dangling on your neck that can fall anytime. And you may not know that all of this is a blackmail of a great life that God has called me and you to live. Such that those 
who are supposed to preach this message. They already preach it as if it's a failure. As if it is something we just, it just because it's obligatory. There's no benefit in holiness. Except that so that we will not offend God. So because, and God is a taskmaster who is just going to catch you now if you just make one mistake like this. And so somebody comes. He's going to an extreme and say, God is love. God is not concerned about all of that. Live anyhow you like. And you wonder how many thousands are running after such. Because you that have the correct message, you have not presented it in his perspective and in his glory. Praise the Lord. When you got to the book of Daniel, and Daniel, I want you to see Daniel. There were only four in the University of Babylon. Only four of them in the University of Babylon. And there was government federal government scholarship that did not only cover tuition, it covers feeding, accommodation, lodging, everything. In fact, what they were supposed to be served as their food is the same menu from the palace. Again, I want you to understand. If holiness for Daniel was environmental. Can he stand? When everybody else is dancing and rejoicing and drinking and eating at no cost to them. And it looks as if it is compulsory for every student to go that way. For Daniel, together with his three brothers, who are his prayer partners, they met and he said, I will not do what? Defy. You see that now? Did you see the language? Did you see the language? They understood something. They said, I carry a life that is higher than that of the king. I carry a life that is beyond all these colleagues and classmates of ours. If I want to be eating the kind of thing they are eating, I will be defiling myself. This is what all others are eating and they are thinking it is something. Brother Daniel saw it as what? A defilement. And he walked up to the to the Chamberlain, the head of school, and said, Provost, uh, with due apology, I'd like to inform you that I and my friends were only four in this college. We think it is not correct for us to defile ourselves with these things, this king's meat, and the kind of food here. We will not like to partake in that. Because we don't want to defile ourselves. Ah! <laughs> that man has never heard anybody. Talk like that. Since that university was established. Everybody rejoiced. Were excited. To grab. The provision from the king's table. And I'm seeing these boys. They regarded what all of us are cracking as defilement. Are we together? And he said, no. The 
man said, no, 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 no. You're going to put me in trouble because this is an ordinance and a decree from the king. If I don't feed you like this, you may not look so plumpy. You will not be handsome enough. You will not be able to stand. Then I said, okay, let's make a deal. Try us for the next 10 days. If our countenance in any way is reduced compared with any of these boys, then let's talk again. And they did. <laughs> By the time they came back, holiness of life makes you beautiful. <laughs> we talk about beauty of holiness. Do you know that some of our young girls and ladies, because we did not present correctly to them the beauty of holiness, the beauty of an uncontaminated life, they went away with a sense of deficiency. And even though we tried to pray to them to be holy, you see this how they are always looking. They say, sister, is it, you know, you say, without holiness, no much. I say the Lord. So it now appears as if any sister that want to live in holiness must be drab. Must appear dry. Must appear joyless. And as if you are just serving a jail term. But that we don't know when you will be released from this jail. Say for me it's for life. It's for life. It's for life. It's for life. I have decided to follow Jesus. You see, when I meet brothers who sing such a song and they are behaving as if it's a punishment, I wish like slapping as a get out. What do you mean by that? I have decided to follow Jesus. The reason is because that is the greatest life is the greatest experience and it makes me the first and the best among all men that's what it does when these boys agreed i will not define myself when they tested them 10 times better than their colleagues so when the man saw that i said okay Go on doing what you are doing. They are just good. By the time they were to be tested, to be presented before the king, the king himself was the chairman of the external examination council. All the panels sat. They, they, they conjured all manner of questions. They went into their archives. They brought out the most difficult question to ask. And the Bible said, in all matters that they asked them about, whether all the science and astrology of Babylon, there was none like these boys. Who could stand before the king. Holiness. Made them bold. Holiness. Made them presentable. Holiness. Release. Their intellectual capacity. The worries that worry their colleagues, no problem about that. Because they are working with God. 
Do you know that? These brothers, they continue like that. They continue like that. At every point, that life. Hallelujah. And by the end of the day, Daniel, you have read about Daniel. Abby, you love Daniel. Do you love Daniel? Uh This man is because they discovered this kind of life. For this first session, it will be sufficient for me to simply note with you that it's a life. And it is the life that we contract, that we collect because of his nature, his seed that dwells in us. So if I want to say it, whosoever does not carry this seed of his life, Christ, cannot be holy. Oh my God, am I confusing you now? When I come back for the second time, I will be dealing with the provision for it. Because, (laughs) you know, I grew for many years now. I grew from all the various exposures that set my heart. I was looking for God. I was looking for, I want reality. I don't want empty gimmicks. I want something real. I told myself, I said, God, if you are not real, let me go back to my father's oracles. Don't let me follow something that is not real because that was the contention when I was to give my life to Christ. I see pastors who came to my father who is a herbalist to collect power. Please. I saw people that will start church and in three months, the whole place will be full. And my father will be smiling. He said, yeah, we did it for him. We gave him what is dragging the people. It's not only now that syncretism, witchcraft, has been brought into the sanctuary. Sometimes when I hear pastors preach, it's as if they were doing the same thing that my father did in those days. Incantations. They call it prayer, but these are incantations. No wonder. But I insist, I say, God, if I cannot taste and, and experience you and your power, there's no need to say I'm following Jesus that is not real. But I want to tell you, it is real. I may tell you, it does not need external support. You don't need to package Jesus. It is real. It is complete. So you know, when I I preach the gospel, I don't need to add anything to it. We don't embellish the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God for changing men. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. But when we come back for the second session, I will be dealing with the provision 
for living this life. God has made a provision. But permit me to stop and say, holiness is a life. If you don't have the life, you cannot be holy. Holiness is not an activity, sir. There's nothing you can do for a pig. No matter how you wash it. Clean it very well. And bring the pig to a very beautiful place like this. Air condition room. With rug. And tell pig. Pig. We like to honor you from now. We have brought you now into the, into the class of dignified men. Here's your seat. Make a good suit for pig. And let him wear it. The pig in pig. Did you hear me now? <laughs> you see, pig is not just pig outside. What makes pig pig? Is the pig inside. The pig inside. He said, this is not my way. I don't know why they are punishing me here. So you will see the... Immediately. When he gets the easiest route of escape. Where does he go? He goes back to the mud. Why? Because the pig in pig only lives on mud. It's of no use preaching holiness to a man who carries the life of the flesh. Jesus never did it. So when we come back, he said, if any man wishes to be a disciple of mine, let him do what? Deny. Let him say Bye bye to self is because self life, no matter how you decorate it, no matter how you teach it, no matter how you train it, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot, they cannot please God, they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They will try, but they cannot. So, if we are going to pray together, yes, for this period, I'm going to request you to first agree with me in prayer. You say, today, the provision for my victory help me to discover it. Help me to touch it. It is life. It is not an activity. It is the inner man that has to experience the life we are talking about. Not the external. Everything external is external to this life. But when the life inside has experienced this victory, it will be all right. So we're going to pray now. I'm not going to rush you to make a decision for this morning. Because I know after a short break we are coming back. Are you going to come back? Eh? All right. If you are coming back, let me not rush you. Let me just ask you to pray. To say, oh God. The life you are talking about is the life I want to carry. You have struggled a lot. You have made every effort. And it's like the thing inside continues to contradict all that you wanted to be outside. 
you struggle to conform from outside. Unless God will walk within you, this will only be a struggle and a mirage. I want you to pray. Let's invest prayer for this afternoon, for this morning. Lord, open my eyes to the provision you are making For me to walk in this life. For me to touch the reality of this life. For me to experience this kind of life. Some of you, you know you have struggled for long. You've made effort. You've entered a lot of regulations. You bound yourself a lot and said... I will not do this again. I will not do that again. But the pig in pig. We always betray the pig. No matter how the cat was caged. Though you didn't have access to eat rats. But the cat inside cat is still crying. Say how I wish somebody would give me a rat to eat. Are there things still crying inside of your soul? Crying for the life of sin. Crying for that strange appetite. It's not that you don't know that it is wrong, but something in you is still looking for it. That's where you need to say, God, where is the victory? Where is your provision for me? Where is the reality that you want me to walk into from this time so that I can become, I can walk in this life that you are asking me to live in? Please call on God with me as I commit this to the Lord. Let's agree that today God will do something that you will never forget again. An indelible experience of God an indelible, that when you will have finished your college here, when you will have become a pastor, you will be speaking from an authority of life. The life that overcomes. You will be ministering in an effortless help that God has given you. Lord, help me this morning. Holy Spirit, we commend this class to you. We are asking that the spirit of truth, the spirit of revelation, will be released upon us. Some of us, our heart is already crying. We are already saying, oh, now I can see where the matter is. I have just been an environmental Christian. When I'm alone, I'm unable to take a stand. Father, this morning I pray that your spirit will have your way. Lord, have your way. Have your way in this meeting today. Begin to do a deep walk in our midst, oh God. Holy Spirit, while we were concluding yesterday, we were talking about the work of the spirit. May your spirit begin to walk in this meeting. May your spirit begin to walk within us. May we see the man of Calvary. May we see your provision for our deliverance. That from now on, oh God, we will not just hear about holiness, but we will walk in it. We will move in it. We will live by that life. Spirit of God, please do it. Please honor your word in our midst. And as we come back, Lord, we're asking that all that you must do before we close, you will bring us into it. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen.